What is good people uh, and welcome back to The Hype Report. Today I have a, uh, a very special guest, someone I've watched personally for a long time. Uh, he owns Payday Vintage, which is a big fuck off vintage company, which he's probably made a lot of money from, which I'm very <laughs> jealous from. Uh, he also has a very cool clothing brand. He knows a lot about the space, a lot about fashion, streetwear, the space in general. So welcome Dom. Perfect, thank you so much for having me on. What's good, bro? How are we? I'm good, thank you for coming. Well, we have, we now have to act like we haven't had any conversation pre-camera. <laughs> kind of awkward, but um, yes, how's life? What's happening? It's good, it's been very busy. I mean, yeah. luckily with January, it's a little bit quieter, so mm. we can like, plan the whole year. So tell the people, what do you do? So I, I'm a fashion content creator. All started out on YouTube, it's called Payday Pickup. I then started a vintage clothing company, so it's Payday Vintage. We sell secondhand clothes, streetwear, sportswear, designer. Then I got a clothing brand, piece I'm wearing right now, episodes Sick. project, a lot of tapestry stuff. I also do like a jewelry brand, so do like rings, chains, called a Riri. It's doing the most, mate. Doing the most, man. <laughs> I don't know how you do it, bro. I, I, I was just speaking before. I don't know how you have that amount of time in a day to kind of do small businesses, so many ventures. It's luckily, it's basically building a team. It's like the same as yourself. Like you're yeah. just so busy all the time. I don't know yeah. how you juggle it. I mean, I still do struggle. Uh, it's just trying to get as organized as possible. Having a team, like a manager, yeah, PA and stuff like that. It yeah, made time, man. Like, I didn't realize until I started this job, time is like, people always say time is money, right? So cringe. It was like, <laughs> what, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? Uh, but now I get it, man. Like time is so valuable. Oh, it's so true. It's true. So valuable. Even coming here today, I was like, oh fuck, what am I going to do afterwards? I've got to do like multiple videos afterwards. And I'm going to have to work until like, I don't know, late and <sighs> but it's life. It's life, It's a good it? price to pay, bro. It's a good, the best job in the world, mate. But anyway... So let's talk about fashion. Let's talk about your brand first. How did you start your own brand? So, clothing brand. so I originally had a first clothing brand. If you ever heard of it, it was called Ultra Pleats. No. So I did that good, for big? six months. I, it was going really well. And mm. I actually got sued by a brand Fuck. in Selfridges. Got sued this. by Selfridges? Over, not of Selfridges, it's a brand in Selfridges. Oh, okay, I, can't, I, can't, okay. I mean, I can no. say the name if you can believe it. Is that right? Yeah, bro, tell me. All right, so I got sued by... Okay, right, Aiden, make a note. I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> so like they're, the pleat, they're like pleated trousers. So I, I always wanted them, but they're £310, these trousers. Sick. Um, so I basically made like the Aldi version. Like Damn. I was like, like the Nor pack. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so I basically made, basically kind of replicated the fit. Actually, no, I made it like a European fit. And I charged £55 instead of £310 for trousers. Sick. And like... They, they took you down. I think it was like a th thousand sales in like the first five months. Wow. Wow, how much, we, well, you can probably say how much you're making now, right? So. Or no. I <laughs> uh, basically took 55 pounds per pair and I sold over a thousand, if you want to work out the maths. Okay, okay. Yeah, that, that, that's decent, bro. Decent money. Decent, mate, that's crazy. So I won't, won't spend too much time talking about the, the lawsuit and shit, but how, did they just send you an email and then done? So basically it was like an 80 page document. So basically they bought all my trousers, which I didn't know. And they'd done like, they'd done like photo, com photo comparisons, but they were saying like stuff like they've got pockets, like obviously trousers have got pockets. Uh, and I was just they like, bought all your <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like the law firm. And I tried Damn. to fight, fight the case. Cause I was like, it's like Levi's and jeans. Like, do you know what I mean? Other brands can make jeans. They don't own yes, denim. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And then I tried to fight it, paid a solicitor, but then, it would have been every single reply would have cost a grand. Yes, yeah, yes. Lawyers are so fucking so expensive. So I just would have, I, and if, if I lost as well, I would have had to pay all their legal fees. So yeah, like, yeah. That's how worth. big brands can do it though. They send you a lawsuit and then they're like, they just buy you out. Like, mm -hmm. They like bankrupt you effectively. Yeah. So, I mean, Nike are doing it at the moment with, um, they were, they, they're valid by the way, but like Nike are doing it with, you see that thing about the TikTokers, oh the rep my TikTokers. God. I saw that YouTube about, about, wait, Sent the fake pair. Yeah. Return the Air Force Ones. Yeah. It, we, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not entirely sure it went down, but um, I don't know how it's going either. But I feel a bit bad for him, you know. I feel bad for him, those guys. I mean, to be fair, though, technically it was like fraud, but like. Yeah. It, oh, 100%. <laughs> so for context, what's actually happened is Nike have issued a lawsuit to multiple replica content creators who basically make money through commission and uh, like delegating, I don't know if delegating is the right word, but diverting traffic to Panda by links mm -hmm. and like like replica places, right? Where people buy food, food, arms and yeah. clothes and shit like that. And Nike have obviously stepped in and be like, nope, yeah. enough is enough. It was like the whole time with them like bootleg Nike trainers, remember that? Ah, oh, mate, mate. I, and the, the you would know this, but like the bootleg Nike jumpers, oh, like yeah. the vintage jumpers, what well, aren't vintage, but they yeah. had like the massive swoosh on them. They were the pop in like That was pop, yeah, 2020. They were probably one of the most popular products. People were paying more for the bootlegs than, than the real yeah. ones. They, they, they did look fucking sick, but <laughs> I, at the time, I didn't really know anything about it because I didn't I didn't, I, I didn't know much about vintage fashion then. I don't know much about it now, but I know a lot more. I know a bit more about it now. But yeah, back then people were paying crazy, bro. People were buying it off on Depop and like moving them for like, 
150 yeah. for like a hand stitch. They were literally getting made for like, I mean, I know, because it was in the market, like eight pounds. Fuck. And people were of like, yeah, like 120 to 150. That's something. crazy. Well, that's just like peak fashion trend, though, isn't it? Yeah. The perfect example yeah. of fashion trends. Um, questions. We're going to swiftly move on. So we spoke about your clothing brand episodes. Anything else you want to say about that? I mean, oh, they yeah. are fucking sick, mate. I mean, Thank you very much. Anyone who is watching on YouTube or, or like the, the visual version, I mean, you can see what Dom's rocking now. It's yeah. This is Fight Club. Fight Club, Brad Pitt, Tyler yeah. Durden. And then it has a quote on the back as well. Sick. And it's obviously got like the dis distressed neck. Which is yeah, crew neck. afraid neck. Yeah, yeah. It's just that's to basically so show sick. the tapestry material. So basically it's made from like a rug. Oh, and then they, So it goes from like a rug factory and they cut it up and then they turn it into clothing. Damn, bro. That's sick, man. So how much this? That is... This is 80 pounds. 80 quid. Damn, nice. It looks way more than that. And I saw, talking about fakes as well, I saw someone repped your... Oh, repped the Frank Ocean one. Yeah, was that, was that it? That was, that was it. Was, yeah. So yeah, was, it's a good sign when people are making fake So version. people have counterfeited your garms already. <laughs> already. Have you been going? Uh, two years now. Damn. And, but you know, you know what was interesting? I saw the... I re-saw the Virgil quote about where he says like he fucking loves counterfeits. Yeah. Because yeah. it shows that you're doing well. Yeah, 100%. And if people want to replicate it, fucking let them do it because... More, more promo. The bit, the bit I'm concerned though is like, how are they? I want, I actually want to buy it and see what actually arrives because surely they don't. Where, where, surely they, where are they selling it? It was from Hong Kong. It so was like it was drop shipping. They were selling it for like twenty five pound. Damn, are you gonna do it? You gonna buy? I it? I bought one. Yeah. Oh, nice. That's gonna. <laughs> I take bought one. I've got it. I've got it taken down now. So I've applied online for someone from Fiverr. Got it taken down, but I still bought the piece. So hopefully, so right. you can take. You, you took it down yourself. So basically, yeah, you can. Pay, I paid someone on Fiverr. They somehow like I don't know appeal like copyright. Uh, okay, okay, yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, because it's on it's on a Hong Kong uh, yeah, yeah. the website and stuff. Okay, dope. That's sick, man. So, what else about episodes? What so, yeah, else? I mean, how I how, I, yeah, I how on concept. earth did you start a clothing brand, bro? So yeah, so obviously I used a lot of what I learned from Ultraplete, uh, and then my flatmate Matt, the guy I do episodes with, he basically had like a theme page where he would just post like people's graphic designs, like yeah. you know, cool artwork, and then he grew it to like fifty thousand followers. Sick. And then he came to me one day. He's like, I got a sick idea. He's like. What do you think of like turning the concept into a clothing brand? He's like, there's so many talented graphic designers. They don't have a clue to make clothing. He's like, you know how to make clothing. Why don't we just collaborate with new mm. designers, give them a little episode, and then uh, each one yeah. we make a new project. <laughs> oh, that's sick, man. That's cool. I like that. So this one was like, like a guy in Brazil who designed it. And then every single sale, he gets a commission. So you're also helping every time you support oh, our you brand. support an yeah. organic design. Oh, mate, that's sick, man. I love that. I have to buy one. No, I have to get gifted one. You are going to get gifted. Hashtag one. gifted, bro. <laughs> okay, what else are we saying? What else are we saying? So, uh, your other kind of major product project, probably what you're known for the most, is Payday Vintage. Yeah. So that is a vintage resale company, yeah. which is very, which is huge. Thank you. Uh, and also, it's obviously your personal, well, your the business YouTube channel of that. Yeah. Uh, I said that terribly, but tell me <laughs> yeah, about yeah. tell me about Payday Vintage, bro. So yeah, so Payday Vintage started. I started out on YouTube doing like basically going to charity shops and reselling on like Depop. Started realizing there was a market for it. Some of the YouTube channels called Payday Pickups, where every payday I show my pickups. Mate, and then, I, I don't know why I never worked this out, man. I should have <laughs> thought about this. And then uh, I was basically at uni, had like no money, and I was like, basically just started selling on Depop, and I realized people are buying secondhand clothes. So I was like, why not just set up a company rather than selling on Depop and losing yeah. the fees? So then set up Payday Vintage, met another lad, just a random person online. I was basically messaging all people who had actual businesses saying, can I have your supplier? Obviously, yeah. everyone was just telling me to fuck off. And then one lad had yeah. a small following. And I was like, if we join together, I'll make videos. You have the supplier and then we'll make a brand together and we'll both grow. Yeah. And now it's... Now it's big time. Smashing. Very, I, I remember Payday. Because I used to be... I used to like... Well, I still buy on Depop all the time. But I... Uh, yeah, I used to buy from... When the vintage stuff was trending, I used to go Depop like yourself. I think I bought quite a bit from yourself, but also okay. Rick's Retro. Yeah. Uh, well, well, there's loads of other big reads like big vintage yeah. resellers, right? And they, it was, it was made back then. But it's probably like lockdown COVID time, right? Yeah, that it was best business, I imagine. That, that was literally when the business like boomed because ev everyone wants to buy, has loads of money, the student loans, and it was just like com comfy clothing, so like vintage sweatshirt. Mate, everyone had so much money in lockdown, man. It was such a scam. I was like, I thought, <laughs> I thought everyone was gonna be broke in lockdown, but it was such a, a smoke cloud. Everyone yeah. was bawling because of furlough and stuff like that. But how, how, I mean. How 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 on earth did you build such a big brand like that? Yeah, like, I think as well it was just like obviously social media just helped so much. I think by the time when obviously like reels came out first, we just smashed them for the Instagram and then now they do we've, well. Did really well. I think because mm. it's just the aesthetic of like they say them Nike sweatshirts. Yeah, yeah. And then now I think we've got like two hundred and like thirty k on Insta, which Not is amazing yeah. for a business like a business account that resells clothes. There's yeah. no face to it, right? Yeah, no face. That's to it. sick, man. Like that's that's fucking sick. That's a problem. Excuse me. It's a problem I have with Kicksforce at the moment. Not a, not an issue, but like Kicksforce is our like pre-love sneaker yeah. like store, e-com store. 
And I always get a bit confused. Like I'm not sure where the marketing is because at the moment it's just like me. But I want to get away from that as well. Yeah, yeah. It's not me. It's not just me. But, but you are the brand there. Yeah, I get that. I definitely. But at the same time, I don't just want it. But I, I don't want it to be just me. I want it to stand on its own. Yeah. yeah. And also, like, I'm not going to be, fingers crossed, I'm around for a long time. I'm popping <laughs> for a while. But the reality is with social media, you just never know. So it's important to, yeah, I think that's to, to kind of, you know, I guess balance it out. Uh, anyway, more about you. Uh, you recently worked with Man United. How was that? Yeah, Tell so us about that. So I'm actually an Arsenal fan as well, which is oh, shocking. Shit. <laughs> so I've been, I've been, I've been, it looks like I'm only a Man United fan. But uh, so... They basically just want to help like a lot of small creators. Like they basically want a load of people to come to Man United and start shooting. Uh, and basically, you know how bloke cause massive nowadays. Yeah, yeah. So they gifted me the third team kit, and I was like, "Let's just do a sick video because I want to like you know, get in there with Man United because I basically want to get the football players in my clothes." Like, yeah. Rashford, Garnacho, go on, you could wear this. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, so we I shot a sick video for basically the, the third team kit, and they posted it. On, they have like a fan page called We Are United. It's Sick. got like yes, I think a couple seen, of million. Seen, seen so they posted, I did like a collab reel with me, and they oh, loved it. Oh, nice! And then they were just like, <clears throat> "Do you want to come down to Man United in the box and like have the like a free day in the box?" Oh man, that's sick! They, man. they got spanked by Man United three 0 <laughs> <laughs> uh, And then yeah, and then they just did for the women's derby. They wanted to try a new thing where we just got creative role. We got to go around the whole pitch, like pitch side, and just shoot whatever going to changing rooms. And it was sick. That's so cool, man. How? how I mean. Oh, mate, it was, ama- it was amazing. Like, I think sometimes I'm like, because I love football. It's like, oh, I used to want to be a football yeah, player. Yeah. And then obviously creating content for a football team as big as Man United yeah. is just insane. But I really just want to do the men's. That's like the main thing. Yeah, that's sick, man. That's so cool. They did a fair play to them for doing that. Yeah. Like going to like the smaller creators, not like yeah. small creators, but like not massive, massive yeah, YouTubers, yeah. like us TikTokers and social media, more with social people. Um, and yeah, asking for their kind of yeah. creativity. Because a lot of the a lot of the, the people, well, at least I think I am, and, and you, you definitely are, but like uh, not like traditional TikTokers. It's a lot that we make good quality content. Yeah. TikTok back in the day, a couple of years ago maybe even like a year ago was a lot more kind of like a bit shitty and a bit like low end quality but now bro completely different yeah do you ever find that the, the low videos sometimes perform better definitely <laughs> I mean I don't do any low videos now though yeah. so now it's literally purely just high end quality stuff high end production mm-hmm. stuff but that's because I'm not a massive I'm, I'm a massive fashion guy but I'm not a massive fashion aesthetic guy mm-hmm. so I don't do like proportions very well i don't do outfit videos get ready with me i don't do shit like that i I, I don't problem with that at all i think it's great that people do that but for me i can't i'm not very good at that so like my kind of i like to think my usp is in the quality and storytelling of the fashion content yeah i think you smashed that and it's a bit of a usp no one else really does it yeah Yeah. it's nothing unique because it's been going on youtube for years but in terms of like yeah i mean tiktok and fashion it's it's quite a big niche and no one really touches it too much Mm -hmm. and i think your editing style is perfect for your niche like you've hit you know the perfect thing for your audience. Yeah, man. That's thanks to my editor, Ryan. Thanks, <laughs> Thank you, so I'll be watching. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Uh, we'll go a bit more into kind of like fashion streetwear now. So what a bit more like kind of generic questions, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm curious to hear your kind of take on it. What is, what is 2024 streetwear looking like? 2024 streetwear. So I think for the tr- trends wise or just brands? Just, or- just in general. So like in terms of, I guess, trends, what's going to be popular, but how do you feel about it? Yeah. Like how is streetwear right now? So I think obviously Corti just smashed the whole streetwear game. I think Supreme are making a big comeback, which is good to see. Yeah, man. I think the only thing that's failing obviously with streetwear is the reselling. Reselling price is just like kind of plateaued. Yeah. But I think it kind of gives the light for like a few smaller brands to come up. Yeah. And I think like, obviously you've seen the whole Timberland trend at the moment, Timberland boots. I feel like there's going to be a load of new boots coming about. Yes. And I think what's good as well, it kind of forces brands to be even more innovative and creative with their pieces because nowadays there's obviously not as much hype behind the pieces now. So I think it's all about the design a lot more. Oh, hundred percent, mate. hundred percent. I think um, the, the, it's interesting you mentioned the resale. The resale on big brands like Supreme is definitely nowhere near, it's, it does a little bit. There's a, the odd piece of season or every other drop mm-hmm. that that moves well, but it's never like the piece that's expected to do well. And then in terms of like the general streetwear resale market, the, the smaller brands have so much more resale because they're they're obviously smaller units, yeah. smaller quality and quantity. Uh, no, sorry, hot, like high quality, but smaller quantity, um, which is a, an amazing trend, by the way. Mm. It's sick that small brands can kind of like, like what you boys do, like Thank make you. like really high quality, cool shit. A few years ago, that probably wouldn't have been, I don't know, but I imagine it wouldn't have been that possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, but anyway, yeah, the, the resale on, on smaller brands is popping right now mm-hmm. because people People want to support smaller brands again, which is a really, really sick trend because people are fed up with these big brands like Supreme. I know they've changed now, but a couple of years ago, pushing out the same shit, same designs. 
it was not the best quality in the world. Yeah. You're charging 155 pounds, 140 quid or whatever it is for a hoodie. Yeah. It's a bit like, well, what is the point of me buying into this brand just for the hype when you can support a smaller brand with probably a cool, a, a more knit, tight knit community? Yeah. Um, and, you know. Yeah, I think it was ever since Supreme got bought out, I feel like. Yeah, so that was 2020, yeah. and that was, what's it called? Something Corporation, what the fuck are they called? V, V, Yeah, v, 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 I, went to, I, went to the, I went to the headquarters. Oh, yeah. The Tim, when I went they, Timberland. They own Timberland. Timberland, North Face. They own everyone. Yeah, everyone. Like, everyone. I couldn't believe it. All yeah. East Pack, uh, Napa Jiri, all yes, the same that's building. It, that's it. It was in Switzerland, obviously, because it's tax-free. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I see. How, how was that? Oh, mate, it was incredible. So you got to go there, see all the offices. VF the same, Corporation. Yeah, VF. VF yeah. Corporation, that's saw, it. Saw all the brands together. Like They all work in the same office. It was incredible office. Amazing experience like uh, and like vans what? they own vans as well yeah vans as well yeah yeah so that's why supreme always collaborate with timberland vans and North shit face. like that yeah. yeah they always have these like concerts just so easy but like walk down the corridor and like bro i've got a new design and it's just <laughs> slapped on the desk and yeah i don't know yeah i think you're right in, in terms of talking about supreme i think you're probably right it definitely did go I, I don't know about downhill but i mean the 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 owner of the brand i don't think it still works in and it doesn't have any shares in it anymore mm -hmm. i don't think i could be wrong it could be i'm not like the, the og supreme yeah. guy but um and and, and yeah i i think it's i think he might still work with design and have yeah, the james o, o, overseer yeah. yeah james jeb has, has the, the o, o, oversees it a little bit but i don't know what the ins and outs are anymore but they're right they're coming back man they're doing bits i think they've had to overhaul everything yeah um the quality it, it's much better the designs are much better and i really like where supreme's going yeah, last year and this year yeah, and yeah. i think it's sick man and i've always i've still been interested in it so i'm one of the guys who can say they can they can rock it in 2024 because i was there when it was shit yeah. Well, I say I, I joined it like the hype, the hype, super hype period, like most people, obviously, yeah. like 2015, 2016. But, um, but yeah, what, 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 yeah, what, what do you think about kind of UK, like hype UK streetwear then? Supreme Palace and Cortez. So I, th I think, yeah, co what Cortez has done, they've like, they've shown the thing I love about them. It's like so inspirational. They've, can, they've shown that you can like achieve anything in a year. Like mm. to collab with Supreme and Nike in one year is like, yeah, that's mad. How the yeah, fair play mad. to Clint, that's man. Like mad. it's crazy. Yeah. He's sick, man. He's so, he's, 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 Whatever, regardless, whatever you think of his persona or yeah. whatever, mate. But he is, he has killed it, man. And he's done such a good job of kind of capturing like the youth, yeah, like the like the streetwear youth. And it's, it's turned people into it. Like people have have joined. It's like it's like what happened in in twenty sixteen, twenty seventeen when people were like, oh shit, Supreme Palace is so hyped. They and, and yeah. then they get into streetwear. They go that, they yeah. go into other subcultures. They go into other niches of fashion. Um, and that's I imagine what what's happened to kind of 15, 16, 17, 18 year olds who, who are obsessed with Cortez now they're, they're you know they forever love the brand but they're also going to go and explore other elements of streetwear which mm. will keep the UK streetwear scene flying hopefully yeah that's what I think the main thing is like I think community is such a big thing in streetwear and obviously him when he does like you know the, the crossbar challenge to get the mate, shoes like sick, it's so man. smart because it builds so much hype and then as you say it's that, the gateway into the rest of the streetwear mate and also bro that guy I, I don't know who was doing it before him if there was anyone doing it before him but obviously people were but I don't know who was but like the password element on the website yeah, bro know. everyone does it now man everyone, everyone like Trico, does it. Not tr tr yes literally mate, literally, his uh, marketing is so good yeah they're sick man as well but everyone does this new password element on, mm -hmm. on streetwear drops and fashion drops now i mean I, I, i've done it with my my have you done it, you done I, it? we've done it we do it before a new drop like a new drop but we don't do it consistently because i feel like no, we're we're not, we, ain't got, we ain't got enough hype yet. We're just saying, yeah, like, no, if, if we got to that point, I would definitely would, but I was just worried if you tried to do it with, you didn't have enough hype, then you're kind of like selling yourself short. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, we did it for, for Boxing Day and it broke our website. So our biggest drop Congrats, ever broke. Man. So, uh, which is a really good problem, but everyone's fucking fuming, bro. I've never been so, <laughs> held so much abuse in my life. <laughs> but um, but yeah, that, that, the, the password element is, is definitely crazy and Cortez have killed it. So in terms of trends... Timberlands, Timberland. footwear, sort of footwear trends. Yeah. Timberlands. So I think, I think, first, obviously the Wales bonus. Yes, I was, I was about to say, you've got a pair on today, I've right? I've got a pair on today. I, I firstly I'm think, not cool enough to wear them, you see. Well, Mate, cool what do you mean? Yes, I'm you could. I'm not cool enough to wear them. Easily could wear them. Nah, Definitely. I don't know. How, how, yeah, what do you think about that trend, the Wales bonus trend? Obviously? I love it because it's just like elevating, it's like not reinventing the wheel. It's like already getting an iconic silhouette and then just yeah. elevating it, which I think it obviously it's got the history behind this amber. And then obviously she's just put her own elements and, on it. And she's not done too much, so it's actually accessible for everyone to wear. Some people go a bit too over the top with collabs. I think like they wreck it. But this one, oh, it's like the I always I always go back to Virgil with everything. But he was he he, he did the, the I guess the same to a degree. Like the three percent rule, you only need to change if you're yeah. collaborating on something like three percent, and that's what he did. So we've got them Samba trend going to still fly this year. Do you reckon? I think yeah, Samba trend will still fly. I think it's going to start dropping off. I reckon. 
Actually, I don't know, because obviously the Euros is this year, so bloke core is going to come back. It's going to, that, foot, mate, football collaborations is going to, I don't know about bloke core so much, but I know that, I know for a fact that there's going to be loads of collaborations, everyone knows, there's going to be loads of collaborations yeah. to Euro 2024. Uh, we saw it last year with, uh, oh, I'm so dyslexic, I can't pronounce the brand, Arsenal and Marahish. Uh, Mara, Marahish. Uh, Mar- Marahish. Yeah. Whatever it's yeah. I'm so <laughs> dyslexic, it's so annoying. Um, there was a multiple other last year as well. Drama called it Man United yeah, and Manchester. They are, that is fucking amazing, it's by amazing. the way. Amazing. They're fucking sick. They're, they're, they're another one, like, yeah. That Man- Manchester Brands drama and Clint's they're both to kill it. Yeah, oh yeah, Cl- yeah, yeah. Clint's uh, they're sick, man. Again, they're they're, they're a brand that's pro- I'm sure they're going to see way more success that's, this year. That's another shoe I think will trend is like Clint's. Like he's made his own independent shoe. Yeah, and, like I don't think like he's even like kind of replicated another model. It's like his yeah, own man. Model. It's so unique, man. So unique. Again, I've seen again all the all the fashion kind of the the, the TikTokers are rocking that shit. So yeah. that will that be mate, it's already popping. But I'm sure by the end of 2024 they they're, they're going to be on top of the world. Uh, what else we got? I think Nike's going to have a comeback because obviously I think Adidas kind of took the lead. Yeah, the man, year. 100%. So they, they post summer, well, probably start spring. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you call it? Spring, summer 2023. Yeah, yeah. All Adidas, man. All Adidas. All Adidas. Just shows that I think when you get like pump money into market and influence, you can actually just create a trend. Mate, Same they, as what Timberland has done. Is that yeah? I mean, I, I mean, I don't know how they've 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 done it exactly. If they've done loads it was, of shit, it was, it was their fiftieth year anniversary. Oh, is it? So I think they just pumped it into loads of I people, see. and now everyone's wearing. It. Yeah, I mean, I I I, I like Timberland. I don't promote Timberlands at all. Not really for me. I don't mm-hmm. think they're for me. I'm, I'm not. I I'll be very surprised if you see me rocking a Timberland boot personally, other than quite if it's for a content review yeah, or yeah. something. I don't know if I'll be doing that. But again, I, I like it, man. It's a, they're, they're obviously super comfortable. They're really high quality, and it's mm-hmm. a good. It's a it's a high quality trend, which is fine. I don't care. Like yeah. good man. Do you know? Yeah. Well, the footwear, Sambas, Gazelles, Gazelle. around Gazelles will come back. Yeah, yeah, Gazelles are on the Auras. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I think, like, have you seen the Nike? They preed a few of the, the Sunders, like, you know, the one they did that CDG Sunders. Yes, Sunders. yes. And I think yes. they'll bring them out Saw as, like, a, a normal, you know, for the, accessible for everyone. Yeah. So, so quite, quite a public release. Public of release, stock. like, loads of different colorways, I personally think. And they also just read, they, actually, they preed another CDG Nike shoe at the moment. Yeah, I saw that a couple yeah. of days ago. Yeah. 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 The, uh, they saw white, black, and I don't know, some other colorway, but. Yeah. So I think, I think, yeah, Nike's going to have a return this year. Yeah, what would you talking about that? What do you think about like the sneaker stuff? Because obviously, stuff like like Jordan fours, Jordan ones. I mean, they have they haven't fallen off a cliff because they're Jordans. They're never going to yeah. die. They still turned over billions last year. But in terms of like the actual everyday hype and, and social media hype yeah. for sure, the cool kids aren't wearing Jordans no more. They actually aren't. No. They're not wearing. Jordans I'm still wearing anymore. Jordan fours. That's my favorite silhouette. Really? But, uh, yeah, I know what you mean. I think. I kind of like that though, because then it means you can just then, less, it's accessible for everyone. But I think, yeah. as you say, people just constantly follow what's the most hyped shoe. So I think they could, they can bring it back. I think obviously the Jordan 1, Jordan 4 silhouette, are just so iconic. I think they just need to do more collaborations. Obviously they've yeah. kind of brought the Jordan 3 back a bit with the J Balvin. There's an, yes, oh, mate, that that's a fucking beautiful, beautiful shoe. shoe. That's beautiful. I saw, we sold a couple of them on Kickstarter and they absolutely flew. They've got a new, there's new Amam, I always say it wrong, Amam, Amam yeah. yeah, yeah, Amam, yeah, Jordan 4 leaked as well, oh, really? I think. Ooh, I think it's like a creamy colorway. Uh, obviously, we see we saw one maybe 2022. We saw it released. The mm-hmm. uh, I don't even know what like kind of like a charcoal gray, like the, yeah. the hoodie. That kind of I, I, I made, well, no, it's like purpley in it, like purpley charcoal. Uh, anyway, yeah. So that th- 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 those collaborations are always super popular. Um, and I would, yeah. use, I would, I, I'm hoping now Pharrell's at Louis V's. Sure, you've got to do a collab with. Obviously, he did the Air Force Ones, but I'm sure there's going to be another collab. He's doing the Timberlands, but I'm thinking, sure, he's going to do another big collab with the brand this year. Yeah, he will, man. He will. Did he? Did he? Did he watch much of the, the Paris, Paris Fashion, fashion Week? Yeah, the rodeo stuff. Yeah, stuff that was beautiful. cool. That was cool, man. I, I sat there and I was like, damn, bro, how can people pull that shit off and it looks good? Because if I did that, I would look like an absolute fool. <laughs> nah, I can see you in some cowboy nah, boots. Nah, like a cowboy, <laughs> mate. No, bro, I look like a clown. Mate, we do it. Let me style you one time in like five different styles. Wait, wait, we should we should do that. That could work. Right? That could be a YouTube video. Yeah. You know? We could do a. Uh, uh, styling, improving coach forces style. style, but and then you style me as well. Yeah, I don't know if you want that, but <laughs> um, yeah, mate, uh, you're right. Probably, probably uh, we'll we, we see some kind of LV collaboration at some point mm-hmm. soon. Uh, what else from the fashion week? Oh, did you see Kid Super? No, he got Ronaldinho. Oh, I did see that. I did see that. Yeah, I did see that. So that, that was, was like I, yeah, I was think sick. Kid Super is one of my. I think favorite designer because he goes so outside the box. He, he keeps everything true to his roots. Like obviously, if you've ever seen him play football, he's sick at football. Yeah, and like the way he got Ronaldinho, like he made yeah, did, yeah, he made yeah, a piece yeah, of clothing yeah. didn't he, with Ronaldinho embroidered in the inside. Sick. And then eventually, obviously, he saw it, and then now he's flipping. I mean, he's like boat, manifesting. Man, he was walking, yeah, that's so sick, mate. <laughs> so sick. And then trend wise, what else? Footwear wise, probably. So yes, yeah, so I think the, the other alternatives to uh, Timberlands. I think like the hiking boots is a huge one. 
like ACG boots. I think Gorp 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 are still going to stay in. Still sure. going to be popping, yeah. Still gonna, and I think Tapestry, you know, it's going to be a trend. Yeah, well, I'm I'm be, I, I would hope so, bro. I would hope so. You hopefully like, could be leading in that. Because I think Broken Planet smashed the trend with like the puff print last year. Oh yeah, they, those guys are fucking, they Just smashed it. Killing it. it. They've got D-Block it. Europe. Like. Yeah, they smashed it, bro. Smashed They're fucking sick, man. I actually emailed, um, emailed the... Oh, no. The, both because you got Lucas and then the the lady who Indra, Indra? yeah I don't want to pronounce her name yeah. terribly wrong and disrespect her because I want them to come on the podcast at some point because they're fucking sick man they're so cool they got like these uh, I saw in their stories yesterday the Broken Planet owners got like these diamond pendants are made of the to celebrate two years or whatever like two, two three years. I, I, mean, like, I think it might be literally be two years mate to see that amount of growth and success in two years is insane I know like that is ins- I, it, mate it's unbelievable like I spoke to Kit in Kit Game the one in Manchester and apparently like. Like their pop up was the busiest the kick game store's ever been. I like, said yeah. so people were queuing up for like like a Supreme drop for like twelve hours yeah, camping amazing. out. It's Broke amazing, planet. man. It's amazing, man. A lot, of, a lot of, it gets a lot of stick, man. I don't like like anything that's popular gets a lot of stick. Yeah. So like I see like all like the cool fashion kids always always kind of make like the top. Five. I used to do this. We used to like top five worst brands. Yeah, twenty twenty four. I used to, like I look back at those videos now. Bearing in mind this was like four years or three years ago, whatever it was. Excuse me, and um, it was so so bad, right? I, I used to do these vids. So it was like. I, just just for clickbait and for views really in it but um yeah they they anything that's kind of popular kind of gets a bit of criticism yeah it? like think, it yeah. surpasses the point of being the cool kids don't buy anymore because it's too popular yeah literally so like there'll be at sambas isn't it as soon as yeah. like too many people wearing them like you can't buy them gone. sambas are terrible the oh worst shoe. the same happened with represent yeah probably broken planet again represent another brand that is like on top of the world mate those guys are fucking amazing um yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm a bit worried about them to represent a little bit because the owners club stuff they haven't like made anything new from that, and I'm thinking if that starts going out of trend, yeah, they've got the uh, they've got the twenty four the two four seven yeah two four seven thing, good. which is like because they're obviously fitness obsessed. Yeah, obsessed. Um, yeah, so that that's like their fitness range in terms of like I guess speaking about like actual like garments instead of the shoes now trends for like. I don't know, tops, bottoms, more like garments in, in 2024, what were you saying? Yes, yeah, so I think obviously the knit, knits has been huge, I think. Yes, like, knits yeah, these hot, colts, knit, man. knit bottoms. I think as well with knits is that you can create such cool designs, you can get different weaves. I think it's like an extra way, I think, to elevate a fit is like different textures in your outfits. Mm. I think, and obviously proportions is the huge thing, isn't it? Nowadays, yeah. TikTok, crop, crop everything, crop yeah, everything. Yeah, oh, mate, I, I don't go outside about cropping now. I get I get shouted at shit on the street <laughs> if I don't get seen cropping my, my Arcteryx jacket or whatever yeah. it is, but... Yeah, that knit knits are popping, bro. Yeah, knits yeah, are knits popping. popping. I've got this um, supreme kind of. Is it woven? Is that you say it? Woven? Yeah, yeah, woven. Yeah. Like this, and it's like kind of like like a nan jumper. It's really fucking bad. It's so bad. It's like cut multiple colors, like green, pink, blue, <laughs> yellow. I have to show you after. It's so fucking bad. Just we put it. I'll send it. I'll send it to Wade, and you can put it on the edit. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see it now. It's the most embarrassing thing I've ever seen in my life. But yeah, I, knits are sick, my man. Knits, knits are, are sick. sick, especially in the UK because it's fucking freezing until about like June. <laughs> Dude. It's literally from like from like September to June. It's absolutely baltically cold. So knits are really good. Yeah. The, what else? The fleeces. I mean, you've seen them everywhere. You know, the, the ninja fleeces. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like loads of brands. I feel like I'm making them. I think pe- what's good is people are actually getting creative with like the different patterns, the paneling. So I think design is definitely getting way higher now. Like because obviously to stand out, you need something completely different. I feel like beforehand there was a lot of just slap a logo on a tee. And hope for the best. Yeah. Like, whereas now I feel like you can't just put your logo on a t-shirt anymore. Yeah, oh, mate, 100. percent It's changed. Change. I mean, you just have to look at like the box, Supreme box logo, mate. The most iconic, one of the most iconic pieces of fashion, like the most like hype yeah. fashion, whatever, like streetwear history. No one really wants a box logo anymore. Yeah. Did they even resell the recent ones? <sighs> I, mate, I, if they did, it's like 10, 20 quid, man. <laughs> Other than like maybe the camo one, which is like the remake of the 2002 or whatever it was, mm-hmm. um, camo bot grey on camo hoodie, but. Yeah, they, they they don't pop off anymore. Mm. But um, yeah, so in terms of done trends, let's mm. talk about your kind of favorite fashion inspirations. Obviously, you mentioned a few people of Paris Fashion Week, but in terms of like, I don't know, maybe like creators, not just TikTokers, but like social media people. Is there anyone you look up to who's on, maybe just who's on social media? Yeah, I'd say, I mean, I'd say obviously most people in the fashion game, you got to give credit to Kanye West. Like, I feel like I went for that whole Yeezy era and I think yeah. that's what got me into fashion, I'd personally say. Yeezys, do you know what I mean? The oversized tees, the, the skinny, well, was, the spray on skinny the, biker the, jeans. The OG Fear of God era as yeah. well, like before the essential shit. Yeah. Like, that. oh my God, bro, that was... Thumb, thumb holes in the tees. Oh, mate, that was a that was a crazy time to be yeah. alive. Mate. But I think that was when fashion was at its best. Like the it was fun so stuff. fun, mate. It was so fun. It was fun. Expensive though. A lot, more, a, lot less, a lot less accessible than it is now. Mm-hmm. 
Um, it's still obviously ridiculously expensive now. Like everything's expensive now. But I mean, you can definitely, you know, there's there's loopholes around stuff now. You can get a cheap alternatives. But yeah, the the Yeezy era and the that kind of OG hype yeah. era. When was that? Like 2015? 2015, 2015 to seven, 2017, yeah. That yeah. was when it was like 350s were popping. Zebras, like, when's the Zebras release? Now they were quite late, like maybe 2017. 15, yeah. But they were like breads. You had the Oreos. The turtle doves. Turtle doves. doves. Then you had the uh, moon rocks. Yeah. Oh, so we went right, right at the start. Right, right, at, right the start. at the start. Yeah, I never had any of the proper OGs. I never had, I don't think I had, the, I, I've had the turtle doves once, but not like at the time oh, no I bought way. them afterwards. Um, how much did you, did you ever spend like a stupid amount on 350s? I feel like everyone's <laughs> gone through a period where they've spent an insane amount of money on Yeezys. Yeah, actually, I was about, uh, the pirate black thing I spent like 350, which back then was, I've been a lot of money. A lot. A yeah, lot. Yeah. And I actually got scammed for a pair of 350s once. Really? But I scammed him back. Which is <laughs> <good>. <laughs> How did you manage that? So it was one of them where it's like, it was just, I was a naive kid. It was like, he posted this thing. It was like a reef selling page. I had like 30K and it was like, <laughs> if anyone can guess where I'm from, they can buy a pair of the Pirate Blacks for retail, which is obviously what a stupid thing to believe. Mm. I was just naive and I was like, Went on his page, found a receipt on one of his like things, searched the shop and it said like Nottingham. So I was like, you're from Nottingham, mate. He's like, no way, you got it right. Like, what's, what's, I was like, what size do you got? He's like, oh, I've got a UK 10. I was like, that's perfect. He's like, send me the money now, bank transfer. Mm. I was like, no, I can only do PayPal. He's like, oh, I don't have PayPal. It has to be bank transfer. And I was just like, oh, that sounds so dodgy. But I was like, I may as well just take the risk. Bought it, went to school. And then literally like lunchtime, checked. The Instagram page is gone. I think how many people he probably did that same thing to. Yeah. Probably like hundreds or maybe thousands. And so I put it in like, you know, the basement, the Facebook group. Yes. Yes. All right, so I said, does anyone know this page? And then someone was like, oh, I know this lad. He's called Callum. All right. So then I asked, if, I basically couldn't find him on Facebook, but I found a few of his friends. Messaged one of his friends and oh, I met you on a night from my girlfriend's Facebook saying, oh, I met you on a night out. Uh, one of my girlfriend wants uh, Callum's number. Can you give him his number? So then they gave me his number. Searched him online, then found he used to play football for a team. So I found his address. Fuck right, it, went, 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 went on Google Live View and saw his car. Right, so his, dad, his parents' car. And so I was like messaging, basically saying like, "Oh, I met you on a night out from my girlfriend's face." Like, can uh, like, and then basically said like, "You you owe Dom money for his Yeezys." And he was like, "I don't know what you're on about." And then he was like, you, you're lying. Like, I didn't do that. And I was like, your dad's got a nice black Mercedes, hasn't he? Oh, shit. You got, you got, you got a red door. And then he, I was like, send me like a hundred pound extra for like the inconvenience. And he just sent it straight over. Mate, that's fucking sick. <laughs> that is so sick. Good man. win. Obviously, Good we're not, we're not, we're not, that is not how you should deal with your problems. We, uh, you should. <laughs> seek legal help if you ever come into that type of issue. But that is fucking sick, man. Yeah, it's good. Fair play, bro. I respect that. Good hustle. That is, it took a while though hustle, it took man. like three months but it was worth it in the end yeah mate that's a lot of money even like at that age especially yeah. you would have been if you were still in school bro yeah I'd never had a, I never had what was the retail like 180 or something yeah 180 I never had I never had 180 when I was at school bro I, I was I was I was uh, I was broke well not not broke but I just wasn't a rich I wasn't like a you know like kids who sell like sweets and shit that was I was me. never I was never one of them <laughs> that was me you were hustling sweets yeah yeah uh, that's, that's where, the, where the where the business is started I had employees and everything fucking hell mate <laughs> <laughs> Mate, that's that's crazy right um another story that that, that came out this week this is a little bit away from from yourself and mm -hmm. me but uh kanye west was oh back God. in the news he, he went viral again and he, he took over the, the the front pages because he allegedly got rid of his teeth I've, I've you it. see it i've seen it yeah what a, what a crazy thing to do i mean it's interesting right it's not as simple as getting rid of his teeth because i think what's actually happened is um well, I don't know, I actually know if he's actually done it or not. That's the question, mm -hmm. right? People are questioning if he's actually removed his teeth because he's, long story short, he went to his dentist, uh, allegedly removed his teeth, if, uh, which cost him 850K, which is a fuckload of money, obviously. A lot of money. And he replaced it with the iconic, uh, replaced his teeth with these, this denture, which was, or, or, or it's either a grill, whatever. Uh, and, pe and he replaced it with this, this like Jaws inspired yeah. James Bond villain looking thing, right? Yeah. Which is like this, this, this crazy fucking thing you'll see on the screen as we're speaking about it now. If you're listening, just imagine if you're on Spotify listening to us or, or other streaming platforms, of course. Um, you, you just, just imagine like this massive aluminium is that how you say it yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it's titanium, tit right? yeah, titanium. The, obviously like massive titanium lump of metal in his mouth like it's a gum shield it's got an right? iphone in his mouth <laughs> <laughs> fucking crazy man so the the interesting thing about this is that his dentist right his dentist actually denied that it ever happened however the dental per the, the the assistant said it did it was legit and someone from his team said that it was legit so i don't know what the fuck it is 
He surely can't got rid of his teeth. I, I think it's like a grill. I think it's a grill. Yeah. I 100% think it's a grill. I think it's just Kanye marketing because he's he's also recorded a 40 minute apology video about all the shit that went down last year and he, at the end of the year, the year before, mm-hmm. I think as well. Um, and I imagine his new Vultures album That's or whatever it's called album. is probably coming out soon. What did you, you think of it? You played it on YouTube. Well, no, I haven't. I've all, only listened to the one song. Is he only? I don't even the, know. The whole someone's leaked the, like, the whole album. Is it? I've it's it's decent, it. but I think like. For his age, the stuff he's rapping about, I'm like, bro, you're like 46. And really? Is a bit... Yeah, I've, I, haven't, I haven't listened to any of it. Is it actually fully out? It's fully out there. I mean, I'm, unless, well, it, unless like... he's personally teased it and then he's going to change it from the comments that people have said. Oh, I see. I like, see. I mean, they've got someone to leak it, I personally yeah, think. Yeah, I mean, they could have it taken out if they wanted, let's be yeah. honest. Like, if they wanted to take it down, they could take it down. But all, all I've heard is the one song on Spotify, which is The Vultures. I don't know what it is. Yeah, yeah, I haven't listened song, to much yeah. Of it, but I haven't listened to, to, to much, of, uh, much of it, but... Oh, mate, uh, he's just genius at marketing, though. So we've already spoken about how you work with Man United, obviously mm-hmm. a massive football club. How did you get footballers to wear your brand? Surprisingly, so the first one, I mean, you may have seen the clip, is like, we actually, I shot Rodrigo from Real Madrid. We actually flew to Madrid and went to his house. But how it, did you do that? So looking for my mates, Clover Man Remedy, he knows like a guy, a guy who's like well-connected, just yeah, knows yeah. all the footy players. And then basically, yeah, he, this guy gets loads of different brands at once. Damn. And obviously, you think he makes money from that, and then you turn up to Rodrigo's house, and then they, they rapidly put him in loads of different brands. Uh, I see. And then obviously, I think he gets a cut of money. It's a genius business model. Oh. But yeah, so then we got. To, but I couldn't believe we got to go in his house. Like we, were, I was literally went you know through the the gate. So there's loads of people there. Just like him and him and his mates, and then obviously the guy we came with, and then I was just there photography, just like camera. Oh mate, next that's piece, sick, next piece. man. What was he like? Oh, I couldn't really speak much English. And mm. the problem was, it would have been sicker, but the guy who organized it, he came like an hour late. And I feel like oh, he was obviously a bit annoyed. Yeah, yeah. I bet, he had a, he had a yeah. Game, away game the next day. I felt like he was probably just like, Get this, bro, let's just, get this just, finished. Just, just get on with it, mate. Oh, that's but annoying. mate, to meet Rodrigo, bro, Rodrigo. Oh, man, the biggest well-known footballers in the world at the moment, mate. Yeah. Brazil superstar. That's and crazy, the, man. And then, yeah, a few other people we've had. I'm an Arsenal fan. Ben White bought the pin... Like literally, I, I was in, in London, I remember, and I just saw it, the order come through. He bought five pieces and like, I thought, I can't be Ben White. So it's the address, like about 10 minute drive from the Arsenal training ground. All right. And then I thought, I'm an Arsenal fan. And this was like, you know, last year when we could have won the league. Yeah. That game before City. Threw in a free t-shirt, wrote a note saying like, please, you have to beat City. And then obviously they <laughs> got spanked. It didn't go down too <laughs> but well. But he, he messaged us on Instagram. He gave us a follow on Instagram. Dropped us a message saying like, I love all your stuff. Like, Mate, what the fuck? So, yeah. so he just organically just found you. Organically Mate, found Mate, that us. is sick, man. That's so cool. And then the other one, this is sick. Um, we had an order from like a, just like a random name. And then, but we, I was on holiday at the moment, so was my business partner. So we could, we weren't, we were basically taking a week later to ship stuff. Yeah. And then basically got a DM from a football player. He's just, actually, I'll let you guess. He's a striker. Uh, he's in the Premier League. He, do, he just, he scored this weekend, if you watched it. He scored a free kick. Tony. Yeah, Ivan Tony. Yeah. So we got a DM from Ivan Tony oh, being like, being like where's my order, bro? No way, bro, he's chasing. <laughs> I was going to put a joke like, like... I bet you put the wrong address, like, and put the bet in cap. I was like, nah, I can't believe that. Oh, fuck, bro. <laughs> oh, my God, bro. You did, oh, my God. I, that should be a minute to clock, but that <laughs> yeah. would have been bad. And then we've had a few, like, recently, like, Leeds players, uh, <laughs> Plymouth, like, a lot of championship players, because they get it ordered to their the training ground, so obviously they don't want to so, see their address. Yeah. that's So how have they found your shit, man? Is it just because the footballers have started rocking it? Must be, should be the ads, I think. I think maybe, like, we'd run a lot of, like, obviously, paid social, like, yeah, like TikTok yeah, ads, yeah, Facebook yeah. ads. But yeah, I don't know how they found it, but I really want to get, you know, when someone shoots, like, you know, the footballers and they walk into the training ground. Or to the um, before oh, game fits. Yeah, they yeah, like Spurs do it on yeah. their TikTok. I see um, them do it all the time. So I need to get a footy player in one. Oh of mate, that's sick, man. That's so cool. Mm. Fuck, I'm so jealous. Not like I have a clothing brand to like to do that really, but that's sick. But like so a, a video in the new year I want to do is like I DM'd the hundred football players to that's like, good. try and wear my that's brand. Good. And like that's the good. aim would be to like try and meet one in person and give Yeah, them. that may that could definitely work, man. It's gonna have work. Have you seen any pictures of anyone working it yet? N- no. The, the the maddest one was did you see that Brazilian rapper? No. So, bro, uh, he, I don't basically, know. he's like Tra- he's like Travis Scott of Brazil. Like really? has like nine million on Instagram. He performed in front of like a ten thousand people crowd wearing this. Oh, so he's big. Like big, but like obviously, but no one in Brazil is going to buy really from the UK. But like, if it's basically like their Travis Scott, he's like the biggest rapper in wow. Brazil. Wow. Like it's club like Rich the Kid, like other American big, rappers. Big, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like he performed in this, like, and someone's got a drone video of him before. Ah. Oh. It's, mate, it's, we, have we got that vid? Can we get got, it? I've got oh, vid, mate, yeah. we, we'll send it over. We can wrap, whack, it in the, whack it in here for sure. Uh, that's crazy, man. That's so much, so much like, um, 
like eyes on your brand. Yeah. Like, I think the amount of people would have seen that guy rocking it and be like, damn, that's a cool, it's a cool, cool sweatshirt, bro. That's and I think sick. about how amazing that kid, because the kid in Brazil designed it. So he just oh, got he got the, he got cool. DMs from like his, some, like random people saying like that rapper's wearing your yeah. your piece of clothing. Damn, mate, that must have been a really good moment for you, mate. mate just like sat dream. back and being like, how many followers has he got on like, Insta and shit? So the what, the, 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 kid, the, 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 ra the rapper nine point six million. I think. Fuck. Damn, like, he's bro. huge. He's huge. Damn, <laughs> mate, that's unbelievable. That. Is that is he the most famous person who's ever rocked something you've kind of sold? Yeah, definitely, F fam most famous person, but. This year, I want to aim to get, yeah. I want to I want to try and collab to you there because obviously each episode we collab with a new yeah, talented you could, person. Yeah, you could do a footballer, man. Footballer or even like a, a uh, music A rapper artist. obviously would work so well, but like yeah. a footballer would be so good. A, a rapper would be more natural, but uh, there, there's certain footballers who have really cool aesthetics these days. Yeah. I mean, you look at like, I don't know, like like Rodrigo or, or other like Real Madrid and French, a lot of the French players. Like Joseph cool. Kunde, the one from yeah. Barca. Best, he's, he's better dressed than Bellerin. I've said it. Really? He's, he's the best dressed like footballer in the Trevor world. Trevor Chalaber as well has got some cool yeah. shit. There's some really good footballers who have rocked some, rocked some crazy stuff. Speaking about who who is who, who is the best dressed footballer? Jed Kunde from uh, Barcelona. Really? It used to be Bellerin because obviously I used to love the Arsenal as well, but yeah. Kunde at the moment. I mean, maybe he's just showing more of his fits. That's probably why. I, I think Bellerin definitely paved the way for the yeah. like... Not not like the football fashion at all, but like definitely for like footballers being more experimental with their outfits yeah. and putting that on social media. Yeah. Bellerin got a lot of shit initially for doing it. I mean, he's walked for like is he yeah, walked he walked for LB? LB the time. That's of crazy, Virgil, yeah. man. That's crazy. And there's there's loads of other good footballers who wear wear, wear cool shit. But uh, yeah, mate, I think I think Bellerin definitely definitely had a, an influence in kind mm -hmm. of footballers showcasing that because there's the Instagram page on on Insta which is like the football fits. Yeah, mate, well, that's why I actually did collab with him the other day. I styled. Uh, well, help give, borrow a few pieces, you know, for Anana for Everton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they like, they were shooting a thing, a magazine cover for Anana at the, at the studio yeah. next to mine. So they came down. I like basically put a rail of like all the rare like yeah yeah leather jackets, the tapestries, and then basically came and took a few pieces. That's so cool, mate. But I wanted to meet him, bro. I was like, I didn't want to just stay around on the shoot. But yeah, oh, that's sick, man, mate. But he's killing it. Bro. Football of fits, man. Jordan, he's killing yeah, they're, it. they're they're smashing it, bro. Those, those boys are. I mean, I don't I don't know the face behind it or anything, but those boys are. Mm obviously doing really really well and it's good man because football footballers you know, traditionally probably didn't used to rock shit like that and now they're there you see a bit more to their personal life which is, is probably good and the bad thing but for me i think like being like making fashion about uh, content about fashion and streetwear mm -hmm. is really good to see and sneakers obviously it's sick man some of the they've obviously got money so some of the stuff you see some of these footballers wearing is, is crazy um what else what else what else uh yeah this is an interesting one the one that i ask most of the people who come on this podcast in terms of like uh, social media and stuff, mm -hmm. what advice would you have for someone who is literally wanting to start making content and doing it for a living? I think obviously finding a niche first, basically just anything you love, like anything you have an interest and like a passion about. Because obviously, mm -hmm. I think a lot of the time, a content you need to. You know I mean, you clearly love fashion, fashion and streetwear and the pieces, so you have to find something you love. Just make content around that. I think storytelling is huge to learn. If you can tell a story and bring people along the journey, and I think being transparent, which is one of the, I say is your best trait, is like you're so transparent with your content. I feel like a lot of people put on like a fake facade for social yeah, media, yeah. which can work, but I think in the long run, people will see it out. You don't gain a core audience. And then obviously consistency yeah. is a huge one. Like posting every day, just make it like a daily schedule of posting every single day. What's your what's your favorite platform, like favorite, social media wise? Literally, well, YouTube is my love, but... I, like that was always my dream like to be a YouTuber like KSI was my biggest inspiration like yeah. going, from going to just like making videos playing FIFA in his room to yeah. now boxing making music he can do anything he wants it's like the dream job I, I, think, I think KSI is the same for me purely because one what he's done but two um, he literally he, he was born and bred in my home village nope. same village mate in Abbots it was a tiny village bro really yeah. small village literally lived his, his house was probably his family home it's weird that I know this but everyone knew it in Abbots I'm mm -hmm. not like some kind of stalker <laughs> but like he used to yeah his, his his family home was like was really really close to to to, to mine uh he, did, he obviously did a video years ago but like going back to my old family home mm -hmm. where he like showed it off and obviously it was just like going back where i grew up so six inside it's not like a it's not like a when people come from rags to riches it's yeah, not yeah. like that i'm not there at all like it's a very it's a nice area i'm very lucky to be brought up there um but yeah it was it was sick man seeing someone like him go into that social media space and like do what he's done, done yeah from my hometown like 100 yards away from where i grew up like is amazing mate and i think another thing with youtube is like when you 
realize how long it takes to edit a video and put together a video. That's why you can appreciate the art of YouTube a lot more. I think like obviously I understand short form content is the best way to grow, but I feel yeah. like long form content is like- Resonate is long term you, 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 Yeah, sure. you remember every single video, filming it, planning yeah, it and editing yeah. it. Yeah, mate, 100%. And I, 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 I do like what TikTok are doing now, increasing yeah, yeah. length and duration of videos because I do want, I'm in a position now, I want to make longer videos for my audience. Mm -hmm. I make, you know, I make 90 second videos every day. So, um, you know, that, that's, that's, that, that's good. But yeah, YouTube is definitely like that kind of, if you want that more heartfelt, I think, experience yeah. with the, with the YouTuber, with the creator, whatever, uh, YouTube is definitely the way. Yeah. It breaks definitely a barrier. I think people feel like YouTubers like they're friends with them because like, yeah, it feels like man, you, you follow that sure. whole life and the whole journey. And I think with fashion, especially in whatever, like it can be anything, but like fashion and collectibles, Pokemon, I like watch a lot yeah. of card unboxing and shit like that. That can be really interesting on longer, because, because on longer format, because just opening a package on TikTok, you don't really get to say too much all the time. Yeah. It's a lot more just like aesthetically quick pleasing whatever but yeah man i think the the youtube is where it is but bro honestly thank you thank you so on. much mate it's been an absolute pleasure man and it's, it's been an honor having someone like yourself who 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 has done so much doing so much and will go on to do probably way more than what mm. you've already previously done so it's been a pleasure man honestly thank you so much for having me on Literally. all good mate all good well everybody please check out dom's socials payday vintage and uh what is plug Ep episodes project episode <laughs> obviously sorry i was trying to think of your like your personal one but we can have it on screen right here um yeah drops hype report drops every monday 6 p.m um big love to everyone who keeps supporting uh, all, 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 all the platforms Spotify Apple Music whatever uh, YouTube obviously to watch this beautiful beautiful set <laughs> and our lovely faces um, yeah man so thank you very much for the support 6pm every Monday I'll see you next time